Thank you for your presentation. Um, I just, I, I don't know where to begin on this, but um, there, there's a distinct discriminatory fra uh, uh, language here. Uh, single mixed family, um, but, but not uh, multi-family uh, dwelling. Um, that's discriminatory. I don't know if it falls under any um, classification of a protected, protected class, but first glance here, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, secondly, um, being that there's so many areas out the, besides the residential area, being that there's so many shopping malls and shopping this and you know all these little mini malls or whatever they're called, strip malls, um, why, why do we need to have, um, why do we need to have a business right in the middle of a residential area and single family? And I haven't heard from my constituents in the East Mesa, but, um, I, I don't know if my, my colleagues here have heard from their constituents, but I don't understand why um, we would have a business right in the middle of a residential area. I don't expect you to answer it, but that's, that's one of the, one of the uh, concern, it's a concern uh, I have. Um, the other, of course, is a single family and uh, not that. And I know that I am aware of Airbnbs throughout the city. And, um, and I know that it has taken away a lot of uh, revenue from our lodgers, uh, our, our, ho our hotels and whatnot. <clears throat> so, um, I, you know, how... And yeah, and then there's also like home care facilities in my district. I know of one, I know of two Airbnbs. I'm sure there's more, but um, it, it's not, um, and, and for the Airbnbs, I have to say, I think that the city has to do something. This is just an aside, but I think we need to start collecting uh, tax money from the Airbnbs. You know, that's an aside, but something to, you know, um, put that in your pipe and smoke it, no pun intended. Um, but the, um, but I, I think that the most distressing part here, and I am, I am not in any way uh, morally or legally opposed to the use of cannabis in any way, shape, or form. Um, well, maybe the form of smoking is bad because any smoke in your lungs is bad. Um, but. Um, but I, I don't, I, yeah, I, it, this, this, this is not a very, um, it's, it's not acceptable to have that. Um, so um, do, do we have, uh, you know, uh, do we have, uh, what's it called? When you have a strip mall and you have clauses in the agreement, you know, because the, the, I believe they're owned by one person and in the strip mall, the stores are leased by the tenant. Is that correct? Is Mayor that correct? Pro Tem, I can't float as that. It's typically what happens. Okay. Well. So are there no competition clauses in those? Because uh, it seems to me that uh, a, a business such as cannabis could be, say, at the Mesilla Valley Mall, or it could be on the many strip joint, uh, strip, not joints, sorry, strip malls. Oh my God, I don't know where that came from. I don't, maybe because it was joint and strip and, and joint as in, you know, smoking a joint. Um, but, but the strip malls, so we have the strip malls, and why? Why can't they go there? Are there restrictions? Are there no competitive uh, clauses? But I, I just find it very distressing. Um, I am not at all, I think everybody knows, I am not at all um, anti-cannabis uh, consumption in any way, shape, or form, except smoking, which is bad for your lungs. But um, yeah, I, I don't understand that part. So are there... Uh, are there restrictive covenants uh, in, in our strip malls? Mayor Bertram, uh, Councilor Flores, uh, we see multiple things 
in our dealings with our with, with our weekly meetings that we have where uh, there was a gentleman who owned a, a strip mall, like you said before, um, he actually would be okay allowing multiple cannabis uh, businesses to be located on the property. Then there was one where he said uh, where they entered into a lease agreement with somebody and they said, nope, uh, mine will be the only one in your in your strip mall. And he's like, and that's how they wrote up. It really depends on how that agreement is written between the leaser and the leasee really, uh, to be quite honest with you. And then just to touch back on the single family residential, the so the special use permits that we've taken forward for the buffer requirement from a single family residential are are along major thoroughfares. They're on Main Street. Uh, the three that come, four that come to mind that we did a special use permit for were on Main Street, which is basically one of our busiest streets along Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. But literally right behind them is single family zoning because it's, it's just commercial. They, they, they don't affect the, the residential uh, properties you know, to the west or east of them or south or north of them. They have direct access to commercial, to, to Main Street only. But because they're literally right next door, just right across the street, they need to do a, a special use permit. And I think you're you're referring the the one that we overturned the P and Z decision on the one where people came in from Tutti Bambini and um, you know that area, um, and we did overturn that decision, that finding. So, but this is different, and and the fact that I, I, I it's not uh, acceptable to me at all to. Um, to discriminate between uh, single family residential and uh, multi-dwelling uh, businesses. I don't understand that part at all, but um, I don't think you, I don't know, Mr. Oh, maybe Dr. Pitts has the answer. Thank you, uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Councillor Flores Dimpitz. Uh, Deputy Director for Community Development. Uh, we actually agree with you 100% on the issue of the single family residential and multifamily residential. That if you're not going to approve to get rid of the buffer for single family residential, then we're gonna recommend you apply it to multifamily as well. That it, it's one or the other. You, you, we shouldn't be picking and choosing which type of family gets a, a buffer. So we're in agreement, I think, with, with what you seem to be saying here, that that's what we're gonna to recommend to you. Well, why would you propose this and then expect us to go back to the drawing board for you? And, and um, yeah, I, 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 and it's, no, I, yeah. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Councilor Flores, that's, we are asking you to remove what we believe to be an inequitable rule in the, in the code. Oh, you're talking about the 300 foot issue. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that I understand. What I'm addressing, Dr. Pitts, is the fact that there's a discriminatory application here as to single dwellings and multi-family -dw dwellings. Did I not read it correctly? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Council Flores, we do not, uh, we do not propose to allow uh, cannabis facilities in any residential districts whatsoever. That's not, that's not one of our recommendations. But you're saying to eliminate the 300 foot, which means that it opens it up to, you know, next door. What we're saying is that currently, um, we'll, and they we'll could, and take, someone um, could use this and say that, you know, the, Council, right now, if you if you were to take, uh, let's say, one of these buildings, just maybe a couple of hundred feet to our north, they all are within 300 feet of residential. Everything from that CVS up is.